Starting in three, two, <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> oh shit! I already pushed the. Uh, hi. Uh, how how's it going? I I'm nostalgic Dave. Pink Fox is over there eating food, so she's kind of void of this episode as well, I guess. Actually, by her choice. Welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. Let right, I should probably pull that. Let's get to the second part of the side story, Trust. Yes, begin it. I wouldn't click on it if I didn't want to do it. Another day passes in a flash, and it's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks... She hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. Oh yeah, at the end of the last part, she found a poem that Sayori made that kind of gave away what Sayori's real mindset is. Great. I'm so stupid. Yes, I'm giving Monica that voice, just like last time. She's basically Karen, or my character Karen how do I let myself be the center of attention oh. sounds like Pink Fox doesn't like that <laughs> Sayori is no, going to I want to be the center of attention well this is a character video game I know. Sayori is going through these kind of feelings and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president am I? Uh bad one. Mm -hmm. A really bad one. Mm -hmm. This whole time I didn't think to ask about her own feelings so much for the stupid vision. Sayori enters the club room with her usual smile. But upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What, what are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? She was trying to help you, Monica. But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Monica, you make it very hard to keep <laughs> consistently giving you the voice I'm trying to give you. Sayori responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Yep. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. Uh-oh. Wait. Is sound happening at all? Is it just me, or is there literally no sound? Maybe it's just you. No, there's no sound. What the hell? I mean, it's faint, but... It's always been like that with those earbuds. No. I'm looking at OBS, and even on there, it's faint. I'm creeped out now. There's a ghost messing with your volume. Okay! I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Okay, I'm running out of... I don't... That just doesn't work. I feel like it should, but in this story's case, it just doesn't. Example. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. Uh, Hi, guys. Me going to nap. Pink Fox is now napping basically by my... Well, no, yeah, by my side. 
This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do all this all of a sudden. I don't want it. Oh boy. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Wow, Sayori. Um, don't pull this crap. I will never. Not you, Sayori. Oh. Pink Fox never pulls that kind of stuff on me, and I love it. Monica messages her for... Message... Dear Forehead, I have no freaking idea what I'm doing with this club. Help! Heart emoji. Kissy emoji. Frown emoji. Family emoji? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell would you say to a freaking forehead? It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things. But as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. <sighs> okay. I understand that you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put this aside so we, we can move on. But, can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. Why are there so many actual pauses? This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in a ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Write the way into your heart, or whatever. <laughs> so I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it. Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. What the hell did I just do? <laughs> actually, I'd love it if she actually said that. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay, Miss Copy. <laughs> I mean, based off the wording, you can't deny that works really well. There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some motivation and stuff. <laughs> okay, the end stuff was not there, obviously, but... I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Hmm. Starting isn't so hard. Actually, I can agree with that. You kind of just need to write down your feelings. Okay, that's not always true. And see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. Okay, Sayori. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Okay, 
famous butterflies and sunshine. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first, and then make it sound pretty later. It's like... It's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. Don't judge me for my hand movements, okay? The gestures help, I guess. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way. Yeah, true. But it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught up in how it sounds and I forget about what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist. You idiot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out, you idiot. After she writes it down. No, keep it up. Wh why? Are you calling me an idiot? Ugh! <laughs> okay, Monica is officially a sassy teenage... Well, actually, she is a teenage girl, but... Sassy? Sassy Monica here. Of course not. But the point is that you're not supposed to poli- Ugh. How do you police your feelings? You poly pucker them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Be as dramatic as you want. Uh. Please don't say that. <laughs> But I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath <laughs> the scribble, Monica rewrite, bleh, rewrites, You idiot. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for, and then I did that exact thing anyway. This is really gonna take some getting used to. Okay. <sighs> I believe in you. Thanks. I do too. And me, 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 I, I mean. But also you, of course. <laughs> Monica continues the exercise, jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write, d write without overthinking it. I know that struggle way too well. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. I wish it would actually show you a sheet, but all it is is just blank. I swear, if I press continue and there's a thing there, I am going to be upset. M maybe not a lot, but... Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. What? I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. I can what tell. The hell? <laughs> Shut up! That's my best version of Sayori I can do compared to what you do. Wait, what did it say? It was literally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Try doing cat's voice. I can't. Cat mm -hmm. Valent Cat Valentine is Pink Fox's thing. It, uh -huh. I'm gonna point that way, even though technically for me she's that way. Fine if I must. Well, you can't read the dialogue. You're you're resting. I can tell how hard you're trying. It I'd makes rather me happy. read the dialogue than listen Hear that. than suffer hearing your Sayori voice. That's always been my Sayori voice, on. Huh? Welcome to the club. <sighs> I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't 
give me too much credit. You gotta admit, though, my Monica matches pretty well with the character type. Hmm. Meh. I'd have to try really, really hard at it. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing with you. Sayori Beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay! Let's do it! Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply for their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club, even though nobody else has joined so far. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. That's good. I was gonna say, if that's it, that was short. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is a printout of the revised literature club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori came up with. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. You're calling a piece of paper attractive? But the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer, right the way into your heart. Surely, common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. I mean, actually, it's not a bad catchphrase, to be honest. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. That's why I said that. Mm -hmm. With you, Hush, you're not reading this. Hopefully Monica and Sayori had thought that it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Next time that you try to Sayori's voice, we gonna have problems. Then we gonna have problems real soon, Pink Fox. Because that's gonna pop up again. No, I just meant in the next side story. Uh, I don't think she's in the next side story, Put actually. That after that one. Again, I don't think she's in the next side story. Side stories. I don't know. I'm gonna have to check later on. Wait, different episode. Probably next episode. We'll see. Anyway. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting. When she performed the writing exercise. If that's the case, though, Pink Fox, don't watch some previous episodes. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? I don't know. Chronologically, this is the earliest. Well, second to earliest, but still. How am I supposed to be president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight on Monica's shoulder only becomes heavier. Debate club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints, and delivering them with conviction. Makes sense. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real. Well, what, 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 what was it beforehand? Were you just like talking to your hand going, okay, how should I fake this? Hand, tell me. You better tell me, Dan! We're just like express seriously, Monica. You're crazy. I said that, I basically said this before. What is going on in here on you? Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. 
but her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. That's weird. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh! Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica! Just move your hand! Monica writes. That's it! This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. It's not a bad start, actually. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. Oh boy. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here! Hi! Hi. Monica hears Sayori approach her desk, then stops for a second probably reading the piece of paper. Then, she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Uh huh. Me too. Okay. You too? The new flyers look so good! You've been working so hard! Okay, you know what? Wasn't it both of you who worked on it, Sayori? On the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Uh... Sayori takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down then stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Oh boy. I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. If you guys want to read that, go ahead. Wait, what was it? That was delayed. That! Fig Fox, if you want to read it, just come look at it. I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. Whoa, Gart. Sometimes <sighs> I want to die. Yeah, that. Is, As, did Sayori write that? Yes, Sayori oh, wrote that. She's going down the Yeah, path she, she, she okay. oh, jeez. Well, depression has set in. That time I was too late! Sayori! Oh boy. This is really, really hard for me. That's why I gave her this stupid high-pitched voice. Because it works for something like that. That's why I gave her Cat's voice. Cat's voice wouldn't work as well because people who yeah. are very, very high-pitched prove that they're faking it. Cat's voice is very high pitched. Not this high pitched, though. Cat's voice goes like this. Yeah, but she's like going this high. It's fake. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. But I mean, that's what you're supposed to be here for, but you're never in it for these versions, so. Were you going to say bite me? No, I said I'm horribly upset. No. Well, great. Now I'm hearing things. I blame you, Sayori. No, you know what? No, I don't blame you. I blame Monica. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Because you're like a million times better than me. Oh, boy. Sayori, please don't. 
That's completely not true. Sorry takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now, my head is like screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't... You don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday. I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the literature club. I trust you. More than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sayori must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile, but genuine efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Who knows? Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. Depression? That is a problem. Well, I mean, that describes depression almost perfectly. Well, at least from my own experiences. No, because I have depression and I don't get mad at when people worry about me. I just tell them not to. Well, as I said, my experiences. Mm. Depression works different based off the person. That's a topic for a live video, though. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? So, so I, I never tell anyone about these kind of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just s smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's terrible. That's what Monica wants to say. But she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. Good idea! Because she will. If she had continued, yeah! It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. They'd probably try to care. Whether it's fake or not, I don't care. At least someone's reaching out. When I'm not smiling, everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. Oh, God. I can actually relate, relate to that. Literally, whenever I go into my day job and I'm not smiling, that's the exact response I always get. That's how people knew, like, I was upset about something in high school. Fair enough. Because I was a smiley person. That, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, teachers wrote in my yearbook that they are going to miss my smile when I graduated. My fun smile in the morning. <sighs> fun smiles are fun times. I know that. Because it used to be like that. Sayori pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. Well, everyone means you too, Sayori. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. That's a weird way of phrasing it, but okay. Sayori pauses again. Her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too. I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But another part of me, I think, j just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence. And our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> I 
It's so silly. The club is only two people, but it is already... It already means this much to me. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Monica steps forward. By the way, where did all the image go? But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. I I if you'd like. <laughs> okay. That's adorable, but that is really sweet. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Through their contact, Monica can only almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, Enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that of all the days that have passed, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking, to say the things she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless, and everyone would be better off with that. Oh no. No, nope. I'm not ready for this, Sayori. I'm not ready for this. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. Just as inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything. It just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks the more she fails to control her voice. Falling victim to the overwhelming sadness clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you part, put up with me and I just want to die. Okay, I'm really not liking this. I liked it at first, but now I don't. As soon as Sayori loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now. So, she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows, Sayori said it herself, that the thoughts Sayori experiences are ones that don't belong. And Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value to me and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have happened. Even if we were never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision. And you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do. Right? Sayori doesn't respond. But Monica feels her gentle nod. 
No more words are needed between them. The two share their embra embrace for a while longer. Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her head and wipes her eyes. I guess I need that. Some days are harder than others. That's understandable. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Okay, Sayori, don't fake that, please. Thanks. Oh, you're not. Never mind. You're the best! I can't tell anymore. No, you are. Two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a... Wow. A the one statement you should never say a to therapist? someone like this. Yeah, a professional. Close enough. Okay. This, this works is, like... This is coming from a person who's seen many therapists in her lifetime. If I have to talk to one more therapist, I will scream this, at the top of my effing lungs. That kind of thing works 50% of the time. Only because only, like... 50% of people... people. It's, it, it's, they, it really depends on the person. You can't just suggest it, because it depends on the person. They drug people. Don't matter. Sayori apparently has anyway. Sayori nods. It's scary. Since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah, Sayori's cure would have definitely been peers. Yeah. Well, of course it will always be your choice. But if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. That would have helped better. Emphasis on would have. Because she's probably had this her whole life. Wait, haven't we already read this? Depression is... I'm pr it depends on the person. Mm, that is a fair point. Thanks! I think it helps knowing that you would. Sayori suddenly yawns and stretches. That's random. Well, that made me tired. Okay, you weren't supposed to yawn once I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I said Sayori yawns and stretches. Next thing you know, Pink Fox is like, Ooh. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was unintentional. I know, I'm just teasing. Dad, hungry. Okay, that was Pink Fox maybe 30 minutes ago. It still is. But I want to feed some pizza for Aaron. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. I want to. I mean, I can say that it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. That's Yuri. That is definitely Yuri. A face that seems familiar. Oh, come on! What? You're gonna stop there? Ugh, fine. Anything new? Okay, we got a new picture. A what? What new picture? Oh, that. That. Oh, boy. Yeah, that. I. My heart melted when I saw this. That was very sweet, actually. What was it? Well, come look at the picture. Uh, well, then don't ask! Fine. <laughs> Hold on. This. Aww. Yeah. That's the one good thing Monica did. So far. <laughs> Monica yeah. don't do very much so far, so... Eh. No. Yeah, well, as I said, so far. We haven't seen Monica do very much aside from being spoiled about herself. Mm -hmm. I mean... Case in point for those who missed it, one of the scenes prior to starting this, Monica's just like, oh yeah, choose me. 
Choose me over those guys. Come help me. Even though I already have Sayori to help me. Come help me. I'm like, Monica, you already have help. I mean, even when I do Sayori's path, I'm still not going to pick Monica. Anyway, we will continue on to side story number two, Understanding, next time. For right now, though, we or I, one way or the other, I don't know if Pink Fox wants to sign up with me since she's jumped in every now and then. One way or the other, gonna leave this video, this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus here. I'm seriously still wondering when we're going to get any mail. Like, what's the point in this part? I don't know. We'll find out later. Either way, thank you guys for watching this episode. Bye. Um, not yet. Want to check out any other visual novels that this train has visited by so far? I think there's only like two on this channel as of right now. Click the link in the bottom right hand corner, train to take you to that destination. Or, if you missed any of the stops on this ride that you want to check out, click the link across my head here, try and take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Now.